Good morning. Today's video is going to be about interfacing potentiometers with the Raspberry Pi Pico. What we're going to cover today is what they are, a little bit of history, what they are used for, in other words, applications, how to wire them up, and then we're going to have a program example to read three different potentiometers all at the same time. According to Wikipedia, the first potentiometer was created or invented by Thomas Edison in 1872. I'll provide a link to the Wikipedia article that explains that. For our purposes with the Raspberry Pi Pico, what we're going to use the potentiometer for is a variable voltage device. In other words, we adjust the potentiometer and it will vary the voltage and we can read that variable voltage uh, with the Pico via its analog to digital converter. If you're unfamiliar with analog to digital converters, especially on the Pico, there is another video that we put out uh, that describes the analog to digital conversion uh, routines of the Raspberry Pi Pico. So we won't go into a lot of those details here. For applications with a potentiometer on the Pico, you may be uh, creating a user interface uh, with your device. Uh, for example, you need to adjust the volume up or down on some sound output. Well, if you put a potentiometer uh, providing input to the Pico, you can have a variable uh, level control, like a slider on uh, a typical Windows interface. You may want to uh, control the speed of a motor, where you use the potentiometer setting to uh, help you calculate the PWM signal for motor speed. You may also be uh, using it to adjust the brightness of a display that you've got attached to your Pico or selecting a menu item that you're showing to the user. There's a wide variety of applications for potentiometers and the general way to think about it is this. You would use a traditional switch of some form for something as simple as turning something on or off. If you need any variable control odds are really good you're going to look toward either a potentiometer or a rotary encoder. Before we go into the fritzing diagram to understand how they're wired up, first let's take a look at the breadboard with the actual potentiometers. That'll help make things a little more clear on that step. Here you can see a traditional uh, potentiometer. Uh, it's a rotary style. I've got a knob on it so that I can rotate it to the various positions. Potentiometers have a limiter to how far you can rotate one way and the other. And they typically have three wires leading back to your uh, Pico. Here is a small uh, linear potentiometer. Oftentimes these are much larger, uh, but this one I bought for I, some special purpose a long time ago, but it never worked out. Of course I kept it and now I'm using it for a, a demonstration today. Here's another very common type of uh, rotary potentiometer, and it's called a trimmer. And these are typically mounted right on a circuit board, and you use them to fine-tune uh, settings in your circuit, or in our case, fine-tune some setting in our software uh, via the voltage divider output. In other words, the variable voltage. So with that, let's take a look at the Fritzing diagram, and uh, we can kind of go through this it's really not that difficult to wire up. You've got three wires coming from any potentiometer. So let's start at the Pico. Um, we've got our Pico mounted on a breadboard and this pin here is the 3.3 volt out so I bring that down to my positive voltage rail. This pin here is a ground and I brought that out to my ground rail. Now let's follow that power into each of the three potentiometers. On one side of the potentiometer will be the connection for the positive voltage. On the opposite side, or the opposite leg, far end leg, would be your ground, or zero volts. And you would have to find that on some potentiometers. It's not really obvious in some cases, so you may have to do a little work with your volt ohm meter to determine which is the two endpoints and which one is the wiper. 
uh, but just as before, we've got our positive to one leg, negative to the opposite end leg. Positive to the end leg here, opposite end leg goes to our zero volts. Same thing on our trimmer, positive on one end leg, opposite end leg goes to zero volts. Pretty straightforward, pretty conventional, and pretty universal. Now our wiper for each potentiometer is usually the middle position leg, and that one is the one that we're measuring the output from, and that'll be a variable voltage between 0 and 3.3 volts. And we would connect that up to our analog to digital converters. So for our rotary 10K potentiometer, we are going to be going into GP number 26, and that is the analog to digital converter channel 0. For our, our linear pot, that one comes through over to here, and that will be on pin GP27, which is analog to digital converter number one. And finally, our little uh, trimmer pot is uh, the wiper of that is connected over to this pin, which is GP28 in analog to digital converter uh, number two. For the uh, potentiometers in this example, I selected kind of a wide variety. Um, actually, this one here is not 30K, that is 1K, so I'll make that correct for you guys. Our little trimmer is a 1K potentiometer. Our example linear is 30K, and our large rotary is 10K ohms. Now, oftentimes you'll see 10K ohms as a very common uh, size to pick for these types of applications where we're creating a voltage divider going into a microcontroller. If you don't have any potentiometers, I would recommend you pick up maybe an assortment of some sort or collect them off of uh, discarded electronic devices. Uh, I've got a collection of them going back probably 30, 40 years, possibly even older with some of the stuff I tore apart back 40 years ago or so. When you find them, keep them. Otherwise, pick them up if you find a good deal on Amazon or something. I'll have a link below in a trimmer assortment uh, that I use frequently or I've bought several times just uh, because it gives me a variety of choices and it works out really well uh, for the projects that I use. So with that, let's dive right into the program. Uh, you're going to find that it is remarkably simple. Um, we've got some basic comments at the top describing what this program will do. I explained the, uh, the pin numbers uh, for the three analog to digital channels. Makes it quite simple when I'm writing the program to figure out which one's which. I've noted that the uh, resolution is 12-bit resolution, so that means that with the uh, potentiometer at the one end, it'll be about zero, and at the maximum end, it would be uh, 4,095, but the analog to digital converter in the Pico maps that out to a 16-bit value, so your range would be from 0 to 655, 535, and that's the, that range right there is the one that we're going to work on the most in our program. Uh, I suggest that you wire it up to um, the Fritzing diagram referenced in the video's description. And then this area here is the whole program to read and print three potentiometer values. We're going to import our machine library and then we'll import our time library. Machine gives us access to the actual hardware on the Pico. Time library gives us an ability to perform time-based operations such as asleep. We're going to create three objects, and these are, for lack of a better word, an object that gives us control over the mechanical uh, port on the Pico. So we're going to have one rotary pot, and that is going to be connected to the machine analog to digital converter number zero, and that's for reading our 10K pot. I do the same thing for our linear and trimmer pots. Now we get into our program's main loop. Almost all microcontroller programs have a main loop, and uh, in this case it's running continuously, 
and we slow it down with a sleep statement of 100 milliseconds or a tenth of a second. And that way it doesn't go so fast you can't see the data coming in. This is the read statement. It's really simple to get the value. Uh, for our rotary pot, I'm saying our value equals rotary pot, uh, the object right here, read micro 16, uh, reading that analog to digital value. So we'll take that uh, value, place it into this variable. I repeat that for the linear pot and for the trimmer potentiometer. Finally, I just simply print out the values as such and then that'll display down here. So we'll go ahead and clear this out. We'll click Run. And you can see right now, uh, my trimmer is not at zero. So I'm going to turn it all the way counterclockwise, and I want that to be my low voltage side. If it's reading backwards and that's high, I can reverse the positive and negative connections on those two outside legs. Now it is very typical that you can't get all the way to zero. Uh, in this case, I can get down to roughly 144, give or take. That's perfectly normal. Um, and then at maximum, I'll rotate this all the way clockwise, and then there we're actually getting 655.35. Again, there you might not reach total maximum. So what you're really working with, you'll need to do averaging, etc., to, to get a very precise value if you need it that precise. More often than not, most people are just working within a specific range or an approximation of a value. Uh, but the trimmers, as you can see, you would adjust that uh, to uh, set the voltage level and thus the value coming in from the ADC for that. And uh, that would, you would act on that to perform whatever action you want in your project. Now the linear pot here, um, very simple, slide it, and we're down at uh, 7800 is its lowest value. Go all the way up, and it goes up to 655.35. So this one has a very funky low end at a very high value, 7K. Um, again, don't get caught up on that. As long as you understand it and you deal with that in your code, it'll work perfectly fine. And then finally, our larger traditional potentiometer, rotary, uh, we're at the zero value counterclockwise, and we're averaging, uh, I'll call it 170-ish at zero. Rotate it clockwise for maximum value, and we get up to 655.35. You'll also note that these variables float around a little bit. Analog to digital conversion, uh, requires an extremely stable power supply. Uh, generally, uh, when you're powering a Pico, it's coming through a power supply of some sort, a USB port, uh, perhaps a, a wall wart that's plugged into it, so your voltages aren't super stable, and you'll see fluctuations like this, and it is somewhat normal. That's it for connecting and interfacing potentiometers with the Raspberry Pi Pico. I hope that you've enjoyed this and hopefully you've gained some knowledge along the way. And uh, if so, please subscribe uh, to the channel. That way you'll be notified of uh, future videos in this series. The Raspberry Pi Pico series that I'm producing is currently scheduled at about 60 videos and it keeps going up as uh, companies come out with other products. Uh, so we'll be featuring other products and accessories for the Raspberry Pi Pico in future videos. Thanks again for watching. I'm Chris Dayhut for Making Stuff with Chris Dayhut. Hope to see you in the next video.